Hey Bio, what's up? Mr. Jones again. Um, today we're doing a pretty short little video lecture on biodiversity, but more specifically, what are the kinds of threats to biodiversity? And by threats, I mean things that are going to decrease biodiversity um, in some way or another. And the way that we, I'm going to sort of go through the different ways in which biodiversity is threatened is by using this acronym right here, CHIPO. Um, and so each letter stands for one of the different threats that exists to biodiversity. And so you can kind of see that there's six main threats that we want to focus on that lead to a decrease in biodiversity. Um, but to start off, first let's just kind of quickly mention or refresh our memories on why biodiversity is so important and what it is. So the term biodiversity, if you break it down, bio meaning life, diversity meaning variety. And what biodiversity means is having a variety of species or variety of life um, present in an ecosystem. Um, and so it's so important to have high biodiversity because the more species you have, the usually the, more, the stronger the ecosystem is, the more robust it is, the less likely it is to fall apart. And if things are to, if something changes or something happens in the environment, having a lot more species keeps it more stable and allows it to recover faster from some sort of, um, either whether it's a natural disaster or a man-made thing that causes the ecosystem to be impacted, they'll be able to bounce back better. Think of it like if you have a food web with mo many, many different connections, if one of those connections is removed, the whole thing is less affected than if there's only a small number of connections in that food web. So you'll, we always want to have more biodiversity. Um, so here's CHIPO. Let's break it down. So the C stands for climate change. The H stands for habitat loss and destruction. The I stands for introduced or sometimes invasive. You'll hear the word invasive species. So these are um, organisms or species that are brought into an ecosystem that weren't originally there and then they cause some sort of disruption. The P, the first P stands for pollution. The second P stands for population of humans specifically. And then the O stands for any of these three things that you would like to make it stand for. Over exploitation, over consumption, or even, or even over harvesting. So let's go through and break these down one by one. So let's start with climate change. And climate change is something that we're going to talk about quite a bit in class. We'll watch some videos about it and um, learn about it. So one of the things about climate change that you should be aware of already is what it is because we've talked about that in class. So climate change is basically any time the climate, which is the average weather of an area or ecosystem, changes. Um, and recently we've seen climate change accelerating at a faster and faster pace. Um, so that means we've seen an increase in temperature in a lot of regions. Um, and as the temperature goes up, that allows things like um, storms to become more unpredictable and more frequent. Um, and as the climate changes, species have to adapt. So species, um, different species are best suited for different temperatures, different amounts of moisture, different environments, right? And so as this climate changes, and as it changes faster and faster and faster, the species ha are oftentimes have a hard time keeping up um, and adapting to that change because the species have to evolve and change in order to be able to fit their new habitat. Um, and the, and the fact that the climate change is happening so fast is having a problem for some species able to adapt fast enough. Um, and so all of the things that come with climate change play a big role in biodiversity. Right? As the temperatures go up, it might get too hot for some species. As the sea levels rise, like we see down here, right? it destroys ecosystems on the coast. It changes the ecosystems as the sea level rises. Places like the estuary here right next to us the San Francisco estuary. Um, as sea levels rise, we might see a change in the salinity of the bay. The, 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 it might become more salty, and as it becomes more salty, some organisms that can't live in such a salty environment might start to die and decrease the biodiversity. Um, so overall, climate change is having an impact on decreasing biodiversity, especially the climate change we're seeing nowadays, because it's going so much faster than it's normally going that species are having a hard time evolving and adapting um, to the new temperatures. The H, the habitat loss and fragmentation, this one is um, considered to be one of the, the biggest threats to biodiversity, at least right now. Climate change might 
as it gets worse and worse, might become the biggest threat. But right now, habitat loss or habitat fragmentation, this word fragmentation basically means breaking into small pieces, separate but smaller pieces. Um, and most of the reason why uh, organisms' habitats are being destroyed or being fragmented has to do with human activity. And in fact, humans have been doing quite a bit of habitat fragmentation, habitat loss, ever since, for, since we've been around and started doing agriculture, really. Because if you build a farm or if you build a field for one crop, you've now caused an area in an environment that is completely different than the rest of the environment around it. Right? You've got this weird square field that grows one crop only and then the normal habitat around that. So you've fragmented that habitat. Um, we've also seen a lot of habitat loss through uh, deforestation, like cutting down trees um, to get uh, for products that need uh, wood or paper. Um, places like uh, Amazon rainforests are especially have been especially impacted by deforestation. Um, and as we destroy these habitats, the species that live there no longer have a place to live, or the place that they live is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, and of course, that's going to cause a decrease in biodiversity. So I want just to point out what that H is. Uh, here's a picture of habitat fragmentation, just in case you couldn't really picture it in your head. So what you can see here is this image here. This is the original habitat, right? It's one large area. You've got some spots on the middle where some species live and then some spots around the outside where some species live. And let's say we build like a highway or a road right through the middle, which is something that we often do. What that does is it basically splits that habitat in half. And now it becomes much harder for the species that are on this side to interact with on the ones on the other side. Right? And now what you've essentially done is created two smaller mini habitats. And um, it can change some things. If you look at this picture, what you see now is the species that used to live on the interior, the dark green area, now have much smaller space to live because the dark green area is much smaller. Whereas the outer area, the light, I guess tan color in this picture, is bigger on both sides. So what you actually see happen is an increase in the species that like to live around the outside of the habitats and a decrease of the species that like to live in the dark green or in the middle of the habitats. And that changes the biodiversity of the area. And in fact, it decreases the, the variety of species. And then the I, which stands for introduced or invasive species. Um, this is basically when an organism that doesn't belong or doesn't, isn't naturally found in that environment or ecosystem or habitat is brought in from an outside source. Normally it's humans bringing it in. A lot of times it's just accidental, accidentally bringing in an organism unaware. This happens all the time. Um, there's tons of different examples of invasive species. Uh, one example that you see on this list is the zebra mussel. And zebra mussels accidentally were brought into the Great Lakes in the U.S. via a ship. Uh, a ship came in with some attached to it and it um, was released into the Great Lakes and now it's a major issue in the Great Lakes. In fact, it costs billions of dollars to clear them out. They clog up pipes. They get into like, um, not only do they do they, do they decrease the biodiversity, but they also cause a lot of damage to our um, pipes, our power plants, anything that's in the water that will just cling onto, and if you get enough of them, they can start to really pull down and destroy some of, that, some of the stuff that they're, they're attached to. Um, so, you know, invasive species are a real problem. They, they usually out-compete the native species that are in the area. It can drive some of them to extinction. Um, and so you can see in this bottom area here, just a list of the various things that, um, that these invasive species do. They'll outcompete the native species, they'll prey on the native species, um, and just overall, they cause a decrease in biodiversity. So there's a lot of strict rules with um, bringing organisms back and forth between different areas, um, because we don't want to introduce species to areas where they don't belong. We can consider this the second greatest threat to biodiversity. Uh, the first P is pollution, and pollution basically is basically any uh, chemicals or material that 
causes a decrease in the health of the ecosystem. So this could be anything from oil or grease from a car, like we talked about before when we were talking about water, right? Non-point source pollution. So that's like grease or soap or fertilizers or things running off from farmlands and into the water. But there's also air pollution, right? Uh, smog emitted from factories and cars, CO2 from cars. Any, any pollution is going to be a threat to biodiversity and cause organisms to have a hard time uh, or struggle uh, surviving in the conditions because they're just not able to cope with the amount of pollution. Some examples of pollution, there's acid rain, which can affect fish and amphibians as it changes the pH of the water. And we've also talked about fertilizers and toxins running off from factories or farms um, that build up in the water and we can see them cause some problems as well. The second P in CHIPO is human population. Um, and so just the fact that humans have such a high number of individuals, right? We're up at over 7 billion people and it's still rising. Um, the amount of people on the planet, like just the sheer number of humans is causing a problem for other species. We're out, we're out crowding them basically, out competing them, taking resources that would otherwise have been uh, good for those species. And just the more people we have, the more problems for other species there is. As people get, as we have more and more numbers, we start to impact all the other parts of CHIPO. So as more humans are on the planet, climate change goes faster because more humans are using uh, fossil fuels, right? And burning those and releasing CO2 into the atmosphere causing climate change to increase. As more humans come into the planet, we need more space. So we start to cut down trees to build homes and roads and farms. And that causes habitat loss and, and fragmentation. So you can see that as people as our population grows, all the other aspects of CHIPO, right, those other parts of CHIPO start to get even worse. All right, so the, just the sheer number of humans is causing a problem. And then lastly, the final uh, piece of CHIPO is the O, which stands for overexploitation, overharvesting, overconsumption. Just the idea here is overuse of just anything, materials in the world. So humans are the ones that are really overusing stuff. We use, we, we, you know, we, we, oh, one of the notorious things that we've been doing is overfishing. So we'll go and we'll just take these big giant trawler nets and just drag them through the ocean and just pick up all the fish we possibly can. And that leaves the fishing, the fish population decimated and they can't recover in time to get back up to the numbers they were before. And at the rates that we're going, a lot of scientists are predicting, like ecologists are predicting that we're gonna lose our ability to get fish from the sea in like 50 years if we keep fishing the way we are. Um, and so a lot of people are, are arguing that we need to slow down our fishing so that we can keep the amount of fish that we have or else we're gonna run out. Um, we also overuse materials. Um, lumber especially, we do a lot of deforestation, cutting down of trees to overuse to, for building materials. Um, and basically anytime the word over harvesting or over exploitation means using more than it can be replaced naturally. So that would mean if I cut down a tree, I need to wait enough time for that tree to come back or another tree to take its place before I cut down another one. Right? If I cut down two and only let one come back, then I'm over exploiting the environment, I'm over harvesting because at some point I'll run out if I do that. Um, a good example that you might want to look up if you're interested is the examples of sardines being overfished around Monterey Bay. Um, if you've ever been to Monterey Bay or been to Cannery Row, which is this picture right here, uh, very famous um, fishing area for sardines that were, and they were overfished for a while and overexploited. So if you're interested in that, you can kind of look up that one on your own. All right, so that's the end of this one, this lecture. Just um, going back over those chippo uh, to know what are the different ways in which humans are impacting biodiversity and causing problems for species in the environment. All right, I'll see you guys in class. Thanks.